Over the past several weeks, I've been working on recreating a game I made as a kid, almost 20 years ago. I covered the brainstorming and artwork style in the previous parts. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use Adobe InDesign to lay out your cards, and I'll show you how to upload them to thegamecrafter.com. All right, let's dive in. Hi, my name is Taylor Thomas Smythe, and I'm an author, designer, and creative. Before I go any further, I have to tell you about my book series, Kingdom of Florida. The seventh and final installment in the series is being released this week. I'm doing a special YouTube premiere video about it, so make sure to subscribe and set a reminder for that. Kingdom of Florida is a middle grade fantasy series, so if you like things like the Chronicles of Narnia, Harry Potter, or the Wizard of Oz series, then this series is for you. And you can catch up on the series at kingdomofflorida.com or click the links in the description of this video. About 20 years ago, I created a card game using MS Paint uh, and scans of hand-drawn illustrations to make uh, this game, which is called Xbox. Now I am recreating it almost 20 years later into a professional quality card game. I go into a lot of detail on those in parts one and two of this series. So if you missed those, go back and watch those. But today I'm gonna do a little more of a walkthrough style so you can learn how to set up cards in Adobe InDesign and format them for thegamecrafter.com, which is a place where you can order and make your own self-published card games that are professional quality. I've used it before, I love it. This is not sponsored, I just am really excited about it and the tools that it enables you to have to be able to make your own games. So really excited about it, um, but let's dive in. There are plenty of ways you can design your cards. You can use Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, InDesign, or there's free things like the GIMP, Canva can probably work. Um, but today I'm going to be using Adobe InDesign because one, because it's the thing I'm most comfortable with. I'm a designer by day, so I do a lot of stuff for print and that is by far the most straightforward uh, way to do that. The second reason is I just think Adobe InDesign allows you to have a lot of flexibility and makes it really easy to create multiple versions of a card. So you can kind of create your main template and then easily duplicate that and just tweak it for the different card variations. Uh, in a card game, a trading card game, all the cards pretty much have the same format and layout, but then everyone has a different like colors and characters and details. So InDesign makes it really easy to do that and to work really well with text and vector elements and images. It also is really helpful when you're exporting for print um, and setting up the bleed and all of those things, which we'll go into in depth in this video. So stick around. So today I'm going to be using the Game Crafter. So I'm gonna go on their website and um, you can click make game, make your own game. They've got so many options and things on here. So definitely check this out if you haven't explored their site before. When you go to make a game, um, it just has this little reminder before you begin to be using a graphic design program. Um, they make some recommendations. InDesign is not on here, but I work with print and design for my full-time job all the time and I find it to be probably the best thing for this especially in a, something where you're going to be creating multiple versions of, of a card um, it just makes it really easy it makes uh, it really easy to work with text and things like that that I find that Photoshop and Illustrator really aren't built for that so we need to figure out what kind of card we're going to use for this I wasn't quite sure um, there's so many options here and it shows the dimensions on here um, but I wanted to go back and look at my original cards. Those were very large, kind of jumbo size, about three and a half inches wide by four-ish inches tall. So that's a little bit large. Um, I wanted to look also at a typical kind of Pokemon card or other trading card. These are what are called poker size cards. So those dimensions are 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches, which is pretty much standard. So I'm going to go with that for this game. So I'm going to click one poker deck and just verify that it's the right dimensions, 2.5 by 3.5 inches. And I'm going to go with that for this um, game. On the Game Crafter, we can see lots of details about the poker deck cards, like their dimensions and file size. Um, so we're going to use these dimensions to help create a template in InDesign today. So the finished dimensions, that's how it's gonna to trim to, are there. Image size is the file you upload. So that includes a bleed, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but that's always a good rule of thumb. On this page, you can see uh, what box and packaging can hold your cards, depending on how many you have. 
So I'm gonna open up InDesign and create a new document. And I'm working off of an RGB template, so I'm gonna switch to inches, use the dimensions we just determined for the poker size cards, scroll down and adjust the bleed. Typical bleed is an eighth of an inch. So that's 0.125 inches on all sides. So you definitely wanna set this. This will come in handy later. And then also our margins, I'm gonna to set to the same um, as you'll see when we look at the template uh, for the cards later. That's just kind of will help us be a helpful guide. So we create it and this is our blank card. One thing you wanna make sure in the earlier stages that you choose web or mobile format instead of print and that'll make sure your swatches are in RGB instead of CMYK, that's pretty important. So we're gonna to go to the layers panel create an additional panel for the guides kind of as the top layer um, which will be helpful in a second so back on the game crafter we'll click on the PNG template um, this is just going to show us what where all the guides and trim lines and bleed lines are save this on your computer somewhere so you can place it into the InDesign template um, wherever you're going to remember it so head back into InDesign make sure you're on the guide layer and click place navigate to the file you just saved and open it in here and click to place it. It should be the exact size to fit in these red bleed lines. Drag it in there, make sure it snaps. And then now we have a guide that is the exact dimensions of our card. If you click the key W at any point, it'll switch between the preview mode and the kind of working mode. Um, so that'll kind of hide and show what your, where your card will actually trim. That's really helpful. Um, I usually like to lower the opacity of the guide image and then lock the layer just so I can kind of toggle back and forth and still see my artwork underneath. So lock that layer, hide it for now, and I'm gonna show you a little more about what this is on this guide itself. So the Game Crafter has templates for all our different card sizes. This is the poker size one. I'm gonna kind of walk you through some of the important elements. First, you have your bleed area, uh, bleed zone, which is the gray area here. This is a part of your card um, that when the card is actually trimmed and cut after they print it, um, sometimes it varies slightly. So you want to just make sure that you have color and design out here so that um, you don't have a white line that looks kind of unprofessional. The trim line is where it actually gets trimmed. Bleed is, standard bleed is an eighth of an inch or 0.125 inches, so no matter what print project you're doing, that's pretty much standard unless you hear otherwise. The safe zone, you wanna make sure any important text is within that because again, the variance in the trim could lead to things getting cut off, you don't want that. The border uh, area, which is the yellow there, um, the Game Crafter shows that you have to have it a little bit thick. You don't actually need to be that quite thick. You just want to make sure that's within, um, like that kind of blue line is a good rule of thumb. Lastly, you want to make sure you delete the guide layer from whatever program you're using before you export it, just so you don't have any of the guide elements on your actual card. Now, before I start adding elements to this card, I just wanted to look back at some actual cards for reference. Um, so I'm looking at just some Pokemon cards. Um, just to see what elements they have. Usually there's a frame for a character, there's their name at the top, some sort of symbol or you know hit points, um, different class and category things, um, their actual the powers and special abilities are all in here. Um, some cards laid out different, differently. I'm trying to think ahead um, to you know things where I might need to add a lot of text or some that only have a little bit and a design that might work for all of the above. Um, so just looking at a couple more, um, they're pretty straightforward. I don't really like all the like 3D effect on uh, cards. I think it looks cheesy, so I'm not gonna be doing that. But I do love all how colorful they are. I like how some of these have images that like spill out of the frame. Um, so that's all just good inspiration. One of the reasons I like InDesign is because of how it sets up the swatches. Um, it sets them up for printers. So um, a swatch in here will apply, wherever you have that swatch in your document, it'll apply you know, if you edit it one place, it'll change it everywhere um, because it's like formatting it as if you were using inks uh, on a printing process. So uh, I'm just going to get started with a border. Um, and again, remember we want it to go all the way to the bleed and at least all the way up to that kind of interior safe zone. So I'm just working with uh, an outline border here. I press W to preview it. Um, looks good to me. That's kind of how it'll, the width it'll be on the actual card. So to me, that looks great. Next, I'm gonna start working on like a frame for uh, the character image. So I'm just gonna add a rectangle frame and uh, kind of play around with it. Um, just looking back again at some reference images, um, just I kind of might wanna, you know, make it similar style to this. 
So just helpful to have references handy so you can kind of go back and forth. Um, I will make it a little narrower. And all of this is subject to change. Um, right now I'm just showing you how to do a card. I still have to figure out all the rules and what the gameplay actually is going to look like, at which may change all of this drastically, but um, kind of just getting the basic elements laid out because that you might have on your card um, as a helpful guide. I'm adding a text box and for the kind of character name or card name at the top, um, I want to pick a font that's really narrow because you know you only have such a limited space here. You pretty much only have one line. So if you have a longer name or title, you want to make sure it can fit there. So I'm using this font called Rock Grotesque, um, which is one I like, and it has a condensed version that keeps it very narrow. So again, just kind of playing around with the size and elements and placement. Um, I'll kind of tweak it as I go, but um, uh, yeah, just kind of getting it in place. Um, going back over to Illustrator, which um, if you want to learn more about how I got all of this, you can look at my previous video where I talk about the character design and inspiration. For some of these special shapes and things, I'm actually going to just copy from Illustrator into InDesign rather than exporting it. So these are main vector items that I can easily change and tweak the points and the colors. Um, this will make it really flexible because I'm going to be tweaking a lot of those things across the deck of cards. So I might use the same shape, but I want to change the color for a different card and so forth. So um, really easy to do that in the swatches. Um, yeah, so just kind of add more text elements, try to figure out how I want the kind of card description or special abilities section to be. Um, so I'm just kind of putting some filler text in here for now. The other important element is like the stats and other special abilities. So I'm going to, again, use some icons that I created in Illustrator, so I'm going to head back over there, copy these. Um, so I created ones for um, what are the kind of standard power, battle, defense, flight, extra, um, all these things that were on my original card deck. Again, you can go back and look at my previous videos to learn more about that. I'm going to copy them one by one in here um, before I start scaling them just so I can make sure they scale all the same. So I've copied all five of those. I'm selecting them and going to shrink them down and uh, yeah. I'm just going to move them down to the bottom. Um, actually, if I put them horizontally, I think that'll look good. So put them here. Um, I'm going to move one of these over here and use my favorite feature, which is in the Align panel in InDesign. So if you select all five of these and then click this spacing, it'll space them evenly uh, across the horizontal axis, which is just so helpful. Um, so kind of kind of tweak size and placement of these. Um, again, change the color in the swatches panel is so easy. Um, so I love doing that. Um, just kind of keep tweaking these, evenly space them out, and figure out how I want to display the stats. I think I'll do them underneath for this, um, just because there are so many of them that might work better than kind of stacking them vertically like some other um, cards might do. And in design, if you have these enabled smart guides, that's really helpful. So when you see the purple line as you're dragging something, that means it's centering it on the document, which is super helpful if you want to keep things aligned. And next, I want to add one of my character designs into it. So I'm going back to Illustrator. I'm actually going to export one of these. So just select it and export the selection, um, just because these are a little more complex. There's a lot more details to them. So InDesign doesn't usually like having super detailed vector things. So exporting it and importing it as a PNG will be the best thing. So just find a place on your computer where you want to save these, um, and it'll export it at whatever format you chose. I chose PNG, sized up four times, um, just so I get a good crisp image. So it's exported, and you can see that it's right here. It looks great. Um, it's transparent background. That's what we want. I also want to think about what the background behind that transparent character is going to be. So I'm going to look at some swatches. For now, I'm just going to fill it with a solid. I think I might add something more photographic or like painterly behind it. Um, I'm actually going to copy and paste in place a second version of this exact thing so I can have the frame of the character in front and the background behind it a separate thing so I'm pasting or placing him in sorry uh, I'm gonna fit him and if you use the direct selection tool which is the white cursor you can scale what's inside of a frame without adjusting the frame itself so this keeps it bounded by the box and just a hint um, you can see it's kind of pixely so if you actually right click on the character and choose display performance you can do high quality display and it'll sharpen it up um, InDesign keeps it in a kind of a preview mode so it doesn't take up too much of your memory as you're working. And I'm taking that frame for the character and just shrinking it down a little bit. 
which will just allow me to access the frame behind it easier. And then I'm also turning off all the colors for the front frame so it doesn't obscure anything. Um, just messing around with some different background colors. I think I like this. Just to kind of make an aside about swatches, um, I'm gonna delete extra swatches. And I'm gonna show you that if you adjust one, it adjusts that color wherever you have it in the document. So I find this really helpful. If you aren't used to this, this might throw you off. If you're used to other programs where an image, you know, an element just retains its own color no matter what you do, this might be different, but you can easily copy that uh, swatch and create a new swatch that doesn't affect other ones if you wanna add multiple colors and things without messing with things. So I'm actually gonna load the swatches we created in the previous video. That way I'll keep all my colors consistent across both the robot characters and the card elements themselves. And I really want it to have a cohesive kind of color palette. So this will be really helpful. I'm gonna delete colors that I don't need. Um, when you delete a color that's already in the document and being used, it'll prompt you if you wanna replace it with another color. And so this is really helpful. I'm just gonna replace it with the RGB from my palette so I know that I'm not having duplicates colors. Um, and same thing, delete the cyan and replace it with a uh, color that's similar to it from my swatches. So that really gets us to the basics of the cards. Again, you hit W to kind of toggle preview mode or not. You can check the guide again to look at, make sure where everything's in the right place and not spilling out in the wrong place, not gonna get trimmed weirdly. Um, again, see the dash line is right where it needs to be. Safe zone, all text is within that. Um, the bleed extends where it needs to go so that we'll have a nice blue edge instead of a white line. And yeah, it's looking great. Our border is there. Again, like I said, you don't have to do it quite as thick as they say. Helpful tip for Adobe programs, Command 1 zooms to actual size and Command 0 zooms so that your image fits the full screen. I'm just going to add a background layer to this um, of some kind of general color. Um, you can actually mess with tints too, which uses a swatch, but um, basically makes it a percentage of that color and without creating a whole new color. So if you edit this color, it'll adjust all the colors that have that, even if they're a tinted one. Um, just print things. Okay, now we're getting to the part where I think InDesign is really helpful when you're creating games, and that is the ease of duplicating layers so you can create variations and other cards. All you have to do is click Duplicate Spread and it copies the entire thing. Um, it even copies the guide layers that we um, did. Um, if you had them hidden, they stay hidden, um, but you can easily unhide them. Uh, same, you know, just really helpful. Uh, so if you wanted to create this card, but then you created one that's like a different character, but all the formats can be the same, this is so helpful. You just have to tweak the things that you want to change and keep the things the same that you want to keep the same. In order to upload my cards, one other thing I need is the back of the card, which is going to be the back that's the same across all of the deck. So I'm just going to use a logo that I created for Xbox. It's this cool kind of X symbol that looks like an old kind of, you know, 8-bit type of thing. So I'm just going to copy the elements out of Illustrator and into my InDesign file, figure out what colors I think will work well for it, um, and do the same kind of process. Again, um, this also needs to bleed, but it's a solid color, so I'm just going to have the solid color extend all the way to the edge. Um, centering the elements, again, you can test the bleed, you know, test the guide. And now we're going to export. So go to File, Export, or Command E. And you want to export in a PNG or JPEG. They say either of those work. work. PNGs, uh, I find, is a little better crisper. So I'm just going to export the back first. So that's page one. Make sure you use document bleed settings. So that's going to add the bleed to the exported file. That's the point one to five inches around all sides. Also export at 300 DPI or PBI and um, export it. And you'll see that if we go preview it, there it is uh, exactly as we want it, the right dimensions. I'm going to do the same thing with the card, export that. Um, you can also export them all at once, but I like to export them separately so I can just name the files as I go. Um, but if you were just exporting your whole deck, you can do that and it'll add iterative numbers to the file names. Um, so you don't have to worry about doing each one individually. And now that we have some cards created, we can actually make our game in Game Crafter. So you go to make, make your game, and then scroll down to the bottom where you can kind of start a new game project. I'm just gonna give it a generic Xbox trading card game name, click create game, and it'll take you to the, your kind of dashboard. You're going to add custom components because we're using custom cards. Um, you go to the cards on the side, but there's so many different elements you can do to create a game. Definitely explore this if you're interested in creating games. We're going to use a poker deck because that's what we're designing the size for. Add to game, and this will start a new deck file. 
So I'm just gonna give it, again, generic kind of name. Click this to upload. Um, you can also drag an image in. So I'm gonna drag, this is the back of your card first and because this is gonna apply to all of your cards. So they have you do that first. So just literally just drag it over and it adds it and imports it. And this little kind of yellow thing means you need to have proof the card. So you just click that and it'll open the proofing window. A few things you see in here are the enable or disable cut lines. That's just showing you the preview of again, where your card will trim. Um, it will not print with that. Even if you have it enabled while you approve it, like it'll go away. It's not gonna be on your card. This color filter is just kind of a simulator of how it might print slightly different from what your screen shows. Click approve and um, it's now approved and you don't have to worry about that. Then you go to add card to start adding the front facing sides of the cards. Same process, um, you can uh, use the back from the whole deck or if you wanted to customize this, this specific card to have it from back, you can click it right there and it'll give you a chance to upload it. Um, but I'm gonna upload this first kind of card art same thing, make sure you proof it and approve that, make sure it looks good. On that little box with the upload, it shows you the pixel dimensions. So you can make sure your file matches those dimensions before you upload, um, just in case you have any issues. Um, you can also adjust the quantity of this particular card. So we want multi multiple iterations of it in the deck. You can just set it there. Um, there is a way to upload a kind of batch upload files and auto name them. I haven't done that before, but that's what that little dialogue was about. Um, we can go back to our deck um, and see the cost of this game so far um, is kind of a minimum because you have to print at least 18 cards with this. So that's why it's 288 when they say they're like 11 cents a you know, card. So, um, but yeah, you can kind of go back and forth here. On the right, you can see all the stats. You can find out what box can hold this space and how many cards you have. Um, it's in increments of 18. Um, so you can type how many cards you have in the top of that box and it'll show you which ones will fit that from tightest to loosest fit. And just a few other things you'll see on this page on the right side. You can see the price per item. You can find those templates. Um, items per sheet, there are 18 cards that print per sheet, so you have to do your game in increments of 18. The bulk pricing is really nice if you're ordering a lot more of these. Um, if you're ordering 10 of them, you know the price goes down, 100, so forth. So really helpful, and again, there's the dimensions there if you need a reference. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about how to set up your cards for the Game Crafter using Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like it, and ring the little bell. Next time, I'm going to step into the process of coming up with the rules and gameplay for my game. So that should be a fun process as you get to really like step inside my head, literally as I come up with all the rules because I haven't figured out what they are yet. And if you missed the first two parts of this series, I've linked them in the description. So make sure you subscribe to this video so you don't miss the next part.